The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from Isaiah 52 and 53. See, my servant shall prosper. He, he shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. <clears throat> Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and this form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. As one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. Just one, my servant, shall make my work righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. 
because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Lord God, you love us, source of compassion. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Lord God, you love us, source of compassion. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Lord God, you love us, source of compassion. Lord God, you love us, source of compassion. Lord God, you A New Testament reading from Hebrews, the fourth and fifth chapters. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 18th and 19th chapters. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. And when Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I'm he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. 
First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it, warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusations do you bring against this man? And they answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. And the Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release you for you, the king of the Jews? And they shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him in the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. 
So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law and according to the law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on, it, on the judge's bench at the place called the stone pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. And they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. And he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, oh, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scriptures say, they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour on, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on the branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. 
Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also believe his, his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus, wrapped it with spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. So because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. crucified Jesus my Lord I just couldn't allow Jesus mother Mary to go there alone I didn't blame the other disciples for not staying away but I'm so glad I was at his side he was my Lord my master but he was also my dear friend and I loved him like a brother I had been with Jesus through the days of miracles and glory how could I not be there at the end of his earthly life? mother should have to watch her son die. Yes, I was there. All day I was praying that it was just a dream. I kept waiting to wake up, but the nightmare went on and on. When Jesus was a baby, we took him to the temple. An old priest named Simeon told me that someday a sword would pierce my soul. Now I know there is no wound more painful.
I was there, wishing I was anywhere else. As a Roman centurion, my job was to see to it that he was crucified. It was a filthy job. And the, those little men at the bottom of the hill would come and see what the cross does to a man. I wonder if they would scream so loud for a crucifixion. I am a soldier, and I have seen a lot of suffering and death, but the memory of that day will stay with me forever. I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. I knew it would be anguish. Still, I wanted to be there. He had saved me from a life of torment through a miracle of powerful love. I wanted to stay with him as long as I could. It was horrifying to watch the one who gave me my life have his life stolen away. But on this day, through the cross, God would bring salvation to the world. It was the time when a sword pierced my soul. It was a filthy job I had to do. It was the most emotional day of my life. What happened on the hill changed the world forever. We can truly say we were there.
Christ, you humbled yourself for our healing. Help us to care for the world that you redeemed. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. O Christ, by your suffering you learned faithfulness. You became a source of eternal salvation for the whole human race. Christ, when threatened, you did not retaliate. Enable us to forgive to the very end. Christ, you see the pain of those who are exiled and abandoned. Protect them. Provide what they need. Bring them freedom and healing. Christ, when lies and worries try to separate us from you, your Holy Spirit is always with us. O Christ, you are the happiness of those who follow you. Enable us to live by your trust. Christ, our life is hidden with you in God. That is the joy that touches the depths of the soul.
Recite with me the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.